this is verse 11, First Peter 4 and verse 11 says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Right. Um, so this verse um, talks about uh, human responsibility, you know, us as ministers of God. Verse 10 says, you know, as, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, um, you know, a steward is someone who who's like an overseer, someone with the responsibility of uh, uh, making sure that things that are in his or her responsibility, they do well. Um, you know, the uh, stewardship does many things, protect, uh, causes things to grow uh nurture and all those things right so so here uh, you know paul is, uh, peter is saying that uh, well the gift that you've received you steward it to one another right so that it's it beneficial for uh, uh each other minister it to one another and he says if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of god as part of the uh, ministering to one another is also speaking you know, and uh, and Paul, uh, and Peter saying that you speak as the oracles of God, meaning you speak as uh, the as what God would speak. You speak what, uh, in in other words, it's like you be the mouthpiece of God, right? You be the spokesperson, you be the mouthpiece um, for God. So the message that you speak or message that you communicate, let it be from the heart of God. Okay, so. Um, uh, so it, it, it uh, you know it it as for us it gives us the responsibility to um, to not speak something um, devoid of you know from from that place of intimacy with God right um, the Lord Jesus says that He's the vine we are the branches so that what flows in the vine flows in the branch and we are the fruit bearing part of the vine you know we bear fruit um, and so. Our responsibility is to to really receive from him and to steward that well, right? So we speak what we speak as the oracles of God. Now it's a it's a huge responsibility, but also it's it's something which is natural for us, you know, as a spokesperson for God. It's something that is natural. We hear, we receive, and we speak. We communicate. Right, so uh, it's some it's a privilege, and it's something that is uh, that should come you know very naturally, because the end result is this: uh, it says that we do it with the ability which God gives us, right? So we can grow in this ability, even as we grow in this grace and knowledge of God, and we do it with the ability that God gives us, and He empowers us, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, right? So in all things. That he gets the glory, right? So, because he gives us the ability, he gives us the message, uh, he enables us to communicate the message. We we are, in a way, like we are like delivery delivery boys and girls. You know, we go deliver it in the way we were, were supposed to deliver, and uh, and it blesses others, it ministers to others, even as we deliver it the way it was meant to be delivered, right? So let's just pray and, and ask God, God, I, I just want to steward the gift well, whatever gift you have given me, or whatever gifts you have put in my life, I want to steward it well, right? I want to speak as the oracles of God. I want to minister with the ability that you have given, right? Um, let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord, um, for these words, God. Thank you that this is um, this is your expectation, and this is um, this is uh, for each one of us. Oh God, you've called us to this. What an awesome privilege, Lord! What an awesome privilege to have the words of the Almighty God in the from the mouth of uh, the heart of a finite man, Lord, to speak your words of life. Lord, to speak those words which which really brought in uh, um, the change in creation and the universe, God, to, to be able to, Lord, speak and uh, to be able to minister, God, these life-giving words, words that are spirit and life. Master, we thank you that you've called us to do this, you've chosen us to do this, to partner with you, oh God, in this whole task of redeeming the world to yourself, God. 
redeeming the people to yourself, the nations to yourself, God. And uh, Father God, we pray that we'll be faithful to that end, Lord, even as you prepare us, shape us, mold us, God, uh, for this purpose, God. We thank you. And uh, yeah, may we be faithful in it. May we steward things well, um, even as you give us this ability. And then in all things, Lord, to you be the glory. Lord, as the psalmist says, not unto us, not unto us, O God, but to you be the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so last class, we, we, I mean, we've been looking at sermon construction, right? Um, so putting together the outline of the sermon and um, like um, all of you have shared what is the uh, topic and you also shared what is the, um, uh, you know, the uh, the, the title and the of, of the sermon as well so we've been going through that so that's good um let me just check if there's been any more additions uh after aradhana i think lubega you still haven't filled in if lubega is attending the class today okay uh please go ahead and fill it in um the title and the topic and i think also someone else um yeah i think aradhana had filled in yeah Okay, so um, who else needs to fill in? Leah Lama, uh, you need to fill in that. Um, as Lyndon filled in, uh, Lyndon, uh, you need to fill in that. Um, so these are going to be, uh, you know, uh, towards the uh, the sermon that you'll be actually preaching. It's not a long sermon; just ten minutes. And so, um, so this, these are going to be assessed. Right for your final assessment. So, uh, I just want to request you to, um, you know, put in that effort and fill that in. Okay, right. Okay. So last class we we looked at um, uh, we finished with the illustration. Right. Uh, why the importance of illustration? Uh, why should we use illustration? And uh, the wisdom of using it, and how often should we use it? Like all that we saw, and then uh, we also moved into the the uh, the aspect of application. Right. So application is important because um, you know not everything can be you know in the sense uh, everything that is let's say preached not everything can be just put to practice in the sense that I, I uh, you know in daily life I may not be able to actually like let's say you're talking about uh, just for an example you're talking about end times and so on so not everything can be it, it is information it is a revelation that I'm receiving. And of course, it creates an expectation for me to, you know, uh, wait and uh, expect the second coming of the Lord. Um, you know, all that is fine, but there's nothing more. Uh, maybe it gives me a burden to share the gospel and all that, right? So there's nothing more that I can do um, in my daily life. You know, there are some things like that. Whereas there, there could be some things like, you know, living a life, a life of sanctification, um, transformation uh, in our daily lives, and maybe um, uh, increasing in the knowledge and the wisdom uh, and the, uh, uh, the grace of God, you know, all those things. Uh, there are certain things that we can put to practice in our daily lives. Right? And so uh, we need to apply this truth. Okay. And there's certain, when we share certain keys of how this can, Make a change, or how can we apply it? This really empowers the hearer to go from hearing or listening to doing. Okay, and uh, and the scripture is very clear. And James, we see, that. don't be a hearer, uh, forgetful hearer, but be a doer of the word. So we are actually empowering, like uh, giving some tools for the hearer to actually start applying this truth in their lives. Okay, so so we saw a few things. Um, okay, so let's look at um, uh, we looked at the principles, right? And we saw that the, the application should not be, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, it should be definite. Uh, it could be specific so that it's easy to put. The steps can be clear. Um, so when should the application be made? Okay, so that's the that's the question. So when should I share uh, about what needs to be done? It actually depends on the message, right? Depends on how the uh, you know how we frame the message, uh, because sometimes the application is right at the very end of the message. Okay, so there are maybe two three things that needs to be done, but you need to hear 
through the whole message because it's it's actually unfolding. It hasn't reached its completion till we conclude uh, or before we conclude. So we finish, and then there is the application. Okay, then you say, okay, these are some things that need to be done. Here are three things that are helpful. You know, this is how you, you know, you step in and do what you've heard. So things like that. Whereas there could be a scenario where, let's say, you have three points that you're sharing. And each of those truths that you've made in those three points, you know, there is an application, right? You shared point one. At the end of point one, okay, this is what you need to do. Application. You shared point two, and at the end of point two, or the uh, truth that you shared, there's an application. End of point three, again, application. So it could vary. So um, the thing is. Uh, you know the time for the application is varies depends on the way the message is structured okay so uh, so that's something to be um, um, uh, to be kept in mind right so the thing is that um, the application is not the conclusion of the message we need to understand that and we move on to what is the conclusion okay the conclusion is the very end of the sermon right so these are the closing remarks these are how you want to end the sermon okay and uh, probably you're calling for uh, you know response uh, from the congregation okay whatever be the response so um, this is the real end right so as much uh, as we plan the introduction and uh, how we are going to start the sermon um, the end of the sermon is also very important you know many times we 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 you know kind of give a lot of importance to the introduction because we want to make an impact and then the body of the message because you know that's important but um, we just leave it to we leave it open right the closing uh, it's good to pray and plan that you know this is how i want to conclude okay this is how i'm going to conclude and of course you know right through we are open to the suggestions of the holy spirit or the promptings of the holy spirit right if he if he asks us to you know stay in one place and emphasize that and we'll do that, of course, right? So, uh, so the conclusion is important. Uh, we should know when to stop, and don't don't drag on the conclusion, and also don't add things at the conclusion. You know, I remember listening to a pastor, like he's no more, um, in one of the churches, Methodist churches. Like he is, you know, um, he, he was a real character in the sense he looked like you know someone from the out of the wild west right he had long side sideburns and he'll wear those cowboy boots and wear those jeans and and uh, he looked like a cowboy you know really um so he would uh, you know he, he would share and every time he shared he wouldn't know where to end or when to end like so so he'll say in conclusion and uh, you know he'll just go on and i i could just imagine it's like a pilot trying to land the plane <laughs> he comes to land and then uh, maybe the air traffic control says no no not ready you know some other plane is there and then he okay, again takes off and then tries to land and then takes off you know just there's so so many you know, like two three times two three trips like that and then finally you know very hesitatingly he will land the plane so you know don't do that right uh, let's not do that. So it can be simple. It can be clear. It can be impactful. Like if we trail off the conclusion, the the impact of what we shared uh, sometimes gets diluted. You know, just saying, okay, uh, you know, let's say if it's a very powerful message. Uh, um, let's say a heart touching message, like right, you shared, and then you finish by saying, um, okay, and um, that's it. I'm done. You know, it's it's such an anticlimax, right? So you shared something which was really powerful, which was really uh, uh, meaningful, really from the heart of God. You spoke as the oracles of God, and then you ended very abruptly, and you just said, "Okay, I'm done. See you all. Bye." Or, uh, "Okay, so that's all I have to say," and then just kind of trail off. Um, you know, so we can plan and make it impactful. Right? So, you know, close it with a closing statement, just like how you started with an opening statement. Close it with a closing statement. Um, uh, don't add, uh, I mean, uh, make it short, make it clear, make it make, add anything to it. You know, sometimes you, as you're ending, 
something comes to your mind oh wow i i forgot that maybe i should add don't it's okay <laughs> you know you forgot that it's fine people are not going to again you know very few people are going to be in that place of receiving you know they've already sat through maybe whatever 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes and they are in that place saying i want to go now right and if you're going to be adding on stuff there uh, it's not going to make sense right they might be polite they might sit through but it's not really going in right so don't add certain things um well the how we conclude uh, you know it it uh, again you can pray through and say okay this is how i want to conclude okay what are some kinds of conclusions right like, um, you know um, we can actually just finish make a statement finish it depends on what kind of meetings we are doing okay maybe if the, if it's in a church setting and you're the pastor uh, you can conclude uh, by leading into a time of ministry you know, like most sundays right um, in, in our churches we do that right so uh, we we finish and then we open it up and invite the work of god uh, into the lives of people so we say in conclusion you know this is what it is and then we say okay why don't you based on what you heard you know, this is who god is and this is what we heard and so why don't you open your hearts and invite the holy spirit to touch touch your heart to touch your lives to maybe there are certain needs that the god needs to only god can meet and uh, you know so we're getting or transitioning into a ministry time right so uh, ministry time can be with a song need not be with a song it can be with a time of worship need not be so it can be you know uh, so but the, but the ministry time is where we are allowing god's spirit to minister to the hearts and lives of people and it can be a powerful time you know uh, sometimes you you don't know what's really going to happen you felt that okay maybe i should just finish and go yeah, you know it's i've spoken and then i don't really feel like going into this right and that's your flesh speaking it's like you know just go home but then you just open it up and you share you know say okay let's let's see what god wants to do right and then you open it up and you see the some amazing things you see a powerful move of god you see people responding um to the uh, encounter with god to the encounter with god and uh, some amazing things happen amazing testimonies come out of it right so be open to that plan pray and be led by the spirit right uh, but you just plan through okay this is how i'm going to finish okay maybe you you want to give an altar call you want to ask people to come come forward and be prayed for or maybe you want to ask people to uh, you know maybe it's a salvation message and you want to give an opening i mean an invitation for people to uh, receive christ right uh, it can be that um, and uh, you can do that or maybe it's a time of prophetic ministry you sense that god is you know revealing certain things to your heart and um, maybe certain health conditions maybe certain emotional things that people are going through maybe some struggles challenges that people are going through and god is putting that in your heart and why is he putting it in your heart when you're ministering because he wants that to be communicated and and why does he want that to be communicated because he wants to intervene and bring in change to those situations right maybe there's a struggle maybe there's a challenge he wants to step in and maybe it's something to do with the family something to do with someone's marriage um so be sensitive you know when you talk about these things when you minister you know um don't embarrass people but really uh, you know uh, be sensitive in these things right um so yeah it's a it's a it's a solemn time at the same time it's not like um, it, it need not be a very quiet time also it can be a very powerful uh, time right um, okay so any questions um on this before we go to the next one any questions application conclusion or maybe illustration um okay uh, if there are no questions then i sorry did somebody ask any question no okay okay oh that was my voice coming through <laughs> okay okay um okay let's move on to the next one then next one is language okay so we are coming to um you know slowly moving into 
the 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 communication of it right the presentation of it so we're talking about language um whatever language that you use first of all you know uh, just ensure that it's a language that the people know okay if uh, people are not comfortable ma many times what people do is i mean this is something that we notice that okay you ask them okay do you know this language uh, or maybe you ask questions like um, uh, you know is there is there anybody who does not understand this you know maybe they they have a working knowledge of the language that you're speaking you know in the sense they understand a little bit of but when you get into the message you realize that people are lost they're not really tracking like they're not following so it's best to understand uh, find out you know beforehand um uh, you know do, will people understand the language and do you need a tra you know somebody to interpret on their behalf so um i think I, I shared this before like in one of the meetings that we had here uh, one of the conferences uh, we asked the same question you know does everybody understand english and then they said yeah 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 no problem um, so we just went ahead in the first message and uh, I, I was sharing that and uh, uh, first day, first message. So uh, just sharing and then um, things were very quiet. You know, and I was wondering, you know, why are people not excited? This is uh, something wrong with me, something wrong with the way I'm, you know, speaking. Uh, maybe uh, then, then after that, you know, during the break, we checked and we saw that, okay, people need some help. Okay, they, they know. Uh, the language but uh, they they definitely would help it would help if we had translation so we had one person translated and and it was a very different crowd okay so session two after the break it's a very different crowd they are just coming alive they are responding and saying hallelujah amen and all that and i'm just wondering you know is this the same crowd is the same crowd that we addressed of course but the thing is the language language made a big difference right so speak in the language of the people uh, just find out and do that okay so having said that the language that we use should be simple clear you know people need to be able to understand without putting in too much effort okay um you know it's it's very it actually it takes a lot of effort to communicate in a very simple manner especially if there are some complex concepts that you're trying to communicate, right? Try teaching a child about, um, let's say, praying in tongues or gifts of the spirit, right? Just think about it. Okay, how would you share that? Or even about you know salvation or how would you share that to a child? Okay, so you would take some extra effort to make sure that the child understands the language okay and uh, when you take that effort things will be so clear in your mind the entire concept becomes very clear and sharp in your own mind your own understanding our own understanding becomes so much greater when we say when we think about okay how will the other person when we think from the perspective of the hearer Okay, so many times we are thinking of the perspective of the uh, speaker. You know, I'm the speaker, so I'm going to speak on. Um, let's say, you know, I'm just going to speak on First Peter chapter two. Um, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, as newborn babes, babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now, I'm speaking from my perspective. Um, okay, I have understood it to a certain extent, and I'm sharing it. But if you speak from the perspective of the audience, or if if you think about that, okay. Now, how will they receive it? You know, who are they? Uh, will they be able to understand you know, words like malice? Do I need to, you know, explain it? Words like hypocrisy? Do I need to explain it? Um, you know, and, and things like that. The minute I, you know, we, we think on those lines, then we realize, okay, you know, I need to be a little more clearer here. And, and it takes a lot of effort, right? And so it, it's um, so that is also part of uh, preparation. Right? It's it's when we while we pray, we get the message from God. You know, all that is part of preparation. This is also part of preparation. You know, asking God, Lord, how can I just help me communicate it to the best of my ability? Okay, he says, right, the, the scripture that we read just now. Uh, before the beginning of the class, it's like, let him who speaks speak as the oracles of God. 
as with the ability that God gives, which means that we can always depend on him. Lord, I want to be able to speak as the oracles of God. I want to be, be your mouthpiece. I want to be your spokesperson. But give me that ability, Lord. Give me that clarity, God, right? Uh, so that it can be a blessing. So when we speak with that simplicity, and you know, sometimes we hear some messages, and we're just blown away by the clarity with which people communicate, right? And there's something for us to learn. Uh, so, we, which means that we put aside, you know, complex words and so on. So, um, you know, knowing the audience again, right? So, it must communicate the language that we use must communicate the message very clearly. Okay, so they hear it, and we don't need to use very, um, you know, high-flown scholarly language. Okay, we don't need to use that. Right. Um, so we're not trying to impress anyone, right? Uh, we're not trying to impress the people. We're not trying to impress God. Definitely, He's not impressed. Uh, we're not trying to impress anyone. So why use, you know, such words? Well, you know, for example, if the audience is scholarly, let's say you're talking to a bunch of professors, and you, you know, you can use language which you know that they would understand. They have no problem understanding certain concepts, so you just use that. You go with it. But if you know the audience, then you know you. We need to, um, you know, tone down our language, make it easy for the hearer to understand. Okay, uh, choose words that most people, you know. Now we cannot be perfect in this, right? You know, if you're, let's say, in a church ministry, you know your audience. At least ninety percent of the audience you know, because these are the people who are coming fifty-two Sundays. So you know the regulars. You know that there are there could be some, you know, visitors. There could be some new folks whom you do not know. But but then by and large you begin to understand. Okay, these are the people. So, but if you're a visiting, you know, speaker, you're an itinerant speaker, then chances are that, well, you may not, right? But well, you you go with with the knowledge that you have. We go with uh, the with dependency on the Holy Spirit, and you do that, right? Um, okay, some more practical things. Um, avoid long sentences with too many words. Okay. Uh, when I was doing my management studies, you know, we had a professor for personal management, you know, uh, HR. Um, we had this professor who, who uh, uh, he. Uh, he delighted in using these long sentences. You know, he will give some for one word. He will give some four or five options. For example, he will say, you know, whether you are smart or intelligent, or you know, and three other words, uh, just to explain that same thing. And by the end of it, we're all tired. Oh man, let him stop. <laughs> you know, just because you get weary, right? And especially these long sentences. Even when you read scripture, you know, there are some long sentences and you need to break it down in order to understand, right? And you do break it down. And uh, so imagine if you hear a long sentence and it's not something that you're looking at, visu uh, you know, uh, visually, uh, you lose track, right? So while it might sound very nice, uh, it might sound very eloquent. Actually, it's nice. Uh, sometimes when you hear these long sentences, it's wonderful. But uh, does it stay? You know, does it benefit? Apart from the fact that you enjoyed listening, uh, it doesn't stay with you. Okay, so uh, so you need to change, right? Um, making it short, making it simple. Okay, and the uh, the other thing practically is that our language should be correct grammatically. Okay, uh, so check. Okay, am I pronouncing this word correctly? Okay, so I always check. You know, when you go to Google, you have pronunciation, right? When you check the meaning, uh, for example, I just show you that tab. Maybe uh, you may know it uh, already. Is about um, anyway. Let me just check. Let's take a, a word. Uh, okay, uh, any word that you can think of, some complex word. Complex word. Okay. Um, any word is complex. Okay, let's say conspicuous. Conspicuous, okay. So conspicuous meaning, okay. So it's there. Let me just share that screen. Okay. So conspicuous meaning. 
it's there. Okay, it means clearly visible. He was very thin with the conspicuous Adam's apple. So we know. And then, uh, you know, the, the pronunciation is also there. Right? Conspicuous. Conspicuous. So I said conspicuous, but actually it would be conspicuous. Conspicuous. I, I think I don't know if it's uh, the American or the British, but then that's that's how it's conspicuous. Okay, so so we go with that, right? Um, con conspicuous. So next time <laughs> when I'm <laughs> preaching, I'll say I won't say conspicuous, but I'll say conspicuous. So I know that I've, I've learned something here. So you know, if if you're in doubt, just check. Um, you know, I, I think I've shared this before, but you know, um, I used to, uh, I still do sometimes do voiceovers for uh, our church, some some of the videos, some of the uh, things, announcements. Uh, not as much now nowadays. There are other people who do it, but I, and I think we kind of stopped doing those voiceovers. Um, so I used to do the voiceovers. So you know, um, at the end of the announcements, you know, there's this line. So those were the announcements. Uh, those were the news or something like that you know so uh, so sit back relax and be blessed uh, so for for many years i used to say those were okay w e r e i used to pronounce it as where so apparently it is actually pronounced as were v e r e is not where it is were those were the announcements. It's not those were the announcements because where is W H E R E? Where are you now? And and all my life, I've never said you know W E R E was always pronounced where by me. So it is those were, those were the announcements. So uh, so an English teacher like she is actually um, uh, she used to teach English in an institute. Uh, spoken English and otherwise. Um, so she, after you know, after many other things, she said she called, said, Pastor, you know, um, you need to change that. Um, that is actually. Then I, and I said, Oh, really? It is. A, a, and I said, Yeah. Oh, that's a mistake. Okay, I'll change it. So then the, when we did the next round of recording, I changed it. Those were the announcements. So this, you know, things like that. Now, why do we do that? Because. Uh, for the listener, now we can't please everyone, but we we are what we're doing is we are removing as many barriers as possible, okay, as many barriers as possible, um, so that we pronounce it the right way, okay. So as many barriers as possible. Now we can't be perfect in everything, and we are just changing and you know uh, correcting ourselves and so on. So, uh, um, so that's the thing. So, so, so you know, let's say. You know this person who's English teacher. So every time when I said those, those were, I'm sure in her mind it was, oh, it's not where, it's were. You know, why is he saying this? Right? Probably it just uh, she never told me that. But but in the message also, if I'm going to be you know uh, using um, sentences which are grammatically wrong, okay, that um, then I'm distracting the people. Right? If I'm using pronouncing words, um, uh, if I'm you know using wrong pronunciation, then that again. I'm distracting people, you know. Um, in the same thing, I just want to say that um, uh, accent also is important, right? So, so use a neutral accent, you know. Like in a in a place like India, we have different kinds of people from different parts of the nation. Uh, I mean, in a, in a class classroom like this, we have people from different nations, and so um, you know, I need to be careful to with my accent, right? So. I, I hope I'm using a neutral accent so most of you can understand, right? Um, but there was feedback in, you know, with the first batch. They said uh, you need to slow down and speak. And in certain cases, they said we we can't follow your accent. Like there are people from Germany, and uh, they said we can't follow your accent. Um, uh, probably if you slowed down, you know, we would understand it. So yes, so th th those were some. You know, feedback from students. So, uh, change that. So, also, do not put on an accent. You know, you know that's very, very important. You know, let's say, um, uh, you know, if you, you, you do not put on an accent just because you feel that it's oh, uh, I, I need to talk like someone, right? You know, like uh, let's say an American accent or a British accent or you know something like that, where um, 
you know, uh, let's say, and I, I'm, I'm just reading the notes, okay. Uh, avoid long sentences with too many words, make it short and, you know, uh, that's not you, right? Uh, that's not me, okay? So uh, do not put on an accent, right? Uh, it will again be distracting and people will actually, you know, um, think that uh, you're not respecting them. So don't, you don't have to, just be yourself, you'll be consistent. Because when you put on an accent, sometimes you might say the word the way you said it, sometimes you may not, you might forget. <laughs> you're excited about the message, you forget, and then your accent drops, right? So um, do not put on an accent, just be natural. You you won't have any, feel any pressure. Um, make sure that the word is pronounced correctly and you'll be fine, right? Okay, so use words that will ex exactly express the meaning uh, words should be pronounced correctly. Also, uh, what happens is when there's clarity of thought, then our language also is clear. Okay, so we have we are clear about what we are going to speak. Right? When we are clear about uh, some of the uh, uh, what we are about to share, the concepts that we are about to share, the thoughts, the message that we want to share, then our language also is clearer. Okay, um, so if, if we are unclear about what needs to be said in our thoughts, we are still, you know, distracted, maybe preoccupied, not very clear, then that shows up in our language. Like language is, a, like someone said, language is the incarnation of thoughts. Uh, these are languages clothed, uh, thoughts clothed with words, right? So, so that's about uh, the language. Okay, any other additional thoughts? before we move on to the next one. Okay, I think these are just some practical things. Maybe you, uh, you know, you're already aware of it, right? So uh, uh, the importance of uh, language, uh, some of the practical things that help us in our presentation, um, right? Okay, um, let's look at uh, one more topic before we close. So that is the different forms of delivery. Okay, this message that God has given you, and uh, you know, can I say it in different ways? Do I always have to preach it? Okay, so that's the question, right? Do I always have to preach it? Well, the answer is, well, it depends on what kind of audience, it depends on what kind of message. Again, it depends on what kind of a meeting it is, what kind of setup it is, right? But you know, these are several ways that you can explore uh, about communicating this message. Okay, what is it? You can just say it. Uh, that's the most simplest, I mean, simplest one. You know, you you say it, you speak it. Yeah, that's that's how it's preached, right? That's how it's communicated. Uh, the second thing, second thing can be an illustrated sermon. Okay, now an illustrated sermon is where all the illustrations come alive as props come alive as, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, object lessons, right? I'm sure you've seen, you know, if you if you watched some of our children's church um, videos, you'll see that there are some object lessons, you know, to talk about, um, um, to talk about, uh, let's say, the work of uh, uh, cleansing, the work of cleansing. So the, you know, just use chemistry, right? You use um, a, a, a liquid, which is probably red or purple in color, and then you use another another chemical, and then you pour that, which is actually clear. You pour that into the purple uh, liquid, and then it becomes clear. So, uh, talking about um, you know uh, about the cleansing work of the Holy Spirit and the work of uh, renewal of the Holy Spirit. You know, you use that, right? So you can use um, you can dramatize it. You can use an illustrated sermon. I remember one of the I think it was T D Jakes uh, in one of his messages. Um, uh, on on the uh, on the pulpit, I mean, sorry, on the stage. I think there was a, a recreated model of a tank, you know, a battle tank, and he came, he comes in to preach in battle fatigues, you know, like the camouflage, you know, and uh, and the whole thing was about spiritual warfare, you know, that whole message. So uh, it was it seemed appropriate. People could actually relate to it. People can actually you know, uh, grab people's attention. So it depends, you know, if you want to do that, you can do that, okay? It can also be in story form, okay? Um, now, 
I remember listening to a message on Ruth and Naomi, okay, um, about Ruth, and it was in story form. It was a story, uh, and it was it's it was a contemporary setting, okay. Now, it was brilliant. Uh, it was a uh, it was a story in contemporary times, modern times, and so which means the entire scenario, the work the the environment everything was contemporary so uh, instead of people working in the fields they would be you know working in a restaurant or an office or you know so that's how it was and this person um, just told that story right from the start to the end uh, and it was it was brilliant right it was a story the whole thing was a story but you could because it was a story you know you were so much uh, you know you want to know what would happen next and before you, you realize oh i've heard this before somewhere and it's actually the story of ruth right and uh, you know you, so it can be a story from form okay and of course props on stage can be used you can use people as props right um there are certain uh, and uh, i'm sure you've seen that you know the work of the holy spirit in um, uh in in moving a stronghold or empowering a believer you know uh, and uh, you know use people as drop props right so one person comes on as the the believer there's another person who's the holy spirit and um, an another person is the sin itself right so he's a huge guy sin standing there and then here's the believer trying to move you know that stronghold that that mountain of sin and He's unable to do that, and he, and here comes the Holy Spirit. So another person comes and he puts his hand on the hand of the believer, and he says, "Okay, you know now, now you can do it." So, so you know that verse Romans eight: If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, so if by the Spirit the Holy Spirit puts His hands on the hands of the believer, on you as a believer, and then you put to or you move things, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So it's a powerful image. It stays with you, right? You see that the Holy Spirit actually helps. So this is how he helps. You know, I need to put my hands first, right? I need to take that step to move things. And then the Holy Spirit empowers me and, and he pushes whatever is in the way with his strength and with his ability. Okay, so we see that. Okay, then we can also sing it. Okay, or maybe it's a, it can be a, the whole thing can be a, um, the whole message can be actually sung. Okay, now this is do, done in, um, in a, typically in India in some rural settings. You know, it is done. But the whole message is actually sung, narrated, sung and narrated. And uh, when I was a small boy, I remember you know going to my grandfather's village uh, and. Uh, uh, and there's a term for it in in Tamil. It's called Katha Kala You know, it's like um, it's sung. Portions of it is sung. It's narrated, and it's a story which is actually you know sung. And it's it's a lot of a uh, lot of folk. Um, you know, um, uh, what what do you call it? folk legends and stories are, are said this way, are narrated this way. Right? There is a story. There is a, a story that is sung, and you can do that as well. Okay. Um, what else you know of course to um, reinforce the message to enhance the message you can always use powerpoint slides we can use videos right these will enhance the message so there's something visually you want to show something you know you want to uh, show a video um, maybe you're talking about um, let's say creation and you want to show a video on it you can do that uh, maybe you're talking about you know good friday and you, it's a good friday message and you want you're talking about you know uh, all the suffering that he that the lord went through and uh, maybe you can, you want you can just show a video right um, so when you when people see the picture they're able to understand the gravity of uh, of the pain and everything that the lord went through physically as well Right, so um, the kind of torture that he went through. So everything, you know. If, yes, words do describe, but then when you show it in a picture, visual form, um, it it is even more impactful. Right? It's even clearer. So you can do that. Consider during uh, doing that. Um, you can enact it. The whole thing can be a play. It can be enact and enacted, like, um, and it can also be a talk show. Right. Uh, I remember one, uh, I think this was a Easter Sunday service, Resurrection Sunday service, where we had 
uh, it was like a talk show. You know, it was a play, but it was a talk show. The whole service was that. So in that talk show, we had um, we had uh, somebody who was actually a host of the talk show. Then we had characters from the Bible, right? There was a woman at the well. There was a centurion. There was uh, I forget who else is well. Uh, there was Zacchaeus, and uh, there was sorry, uh, there was Nicodemus. Sorry, not Zacchaeus. Nicodemus. You know, he who went to meet Jesus in the night. So all these people were there uh, uh, in the talk show, and the host would ask them questions. So why did you do what you did, and what do you think about Jesus? And uh, you know, and the, and the, and especially with the centurion, it was very interesting that he would say, you know, this is what happened. Um, I I think he was the son of God, and and things like that, right? So um, a talk show can also be uh, very very powerful, and it can be very contemporary. It can make the message is relevant to us. Maybe at the end of it, you know, somebody can wrap it up. You know, somebody can um, uh, lead in a time of ministry uh, and then finish. You know, it can be a powerful time, especially when you're calling people who are unchurched, you know, people who are not used to sitting and listening, you know, uh, to a forty-minute message. You know, uh, maybe you're calling some people who are. Uh, not believers from from people from different faith. This would be ideal. This is engaging, and maybe sometimes uh, at places it's funny, and so it's uh, it would really be powerful and impactful. Okay, so talk show. Um, okay, so we'll stop here, and then we we'll look at uh, when we'll continue with different forms of delivery where we can preach, where you can teach, where you can prophesy. Okay, so we we'll look into that. Okay, we'll stop here. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.